combat in Dungeons and Dragons can make or break your session. So in this video, I'm going to cover some of the best things you can do to improve your Dungeons and Dragons combat and some of these you might not have ever even thought of. And while I did say Dungeons and Dragons combat, most if not all of these will apply to any TTRPG. So if you just want to improve your combat in any game that you're playing, this video is for you. So now we will jump straight into the things that can improve your combat. And we're going to start at the very beginning with the first thing everybody does when it comes to combat, and that is initiative. My suggestion with this is to preset your monster's initiatives. Instead of going through having to roll your dice to figure out what their bonus is in the middle of the session, if you have the opportunity to do so beforehand, go ahead and set it. Whether it's on BTTs, like Foundry or Roll20, or in person, jot it down in your notes that they're going to go on an 18 or a 13 or an 8 or a 12. That way you are able to already have that out of the way and you are ready to get in, start writing down the other player's initiatives and getting right into combat instead of trying to figure it out. This is especially important if you have lots of different monsters. This tip just makes your job easier in the moment. There's a lot of things to focus on when you're a dungeon master. So being able to just move that out of something that's on your plate in the moment is something that I think will make your combat much better. Next up is talking about the action economy. So in game, you know that you have actions, bonus actions, reactions, all that sort of stuff. Well, know your monsters and what they tend to do and add variation. So in a lot of games, it gets into this monotony. I'm sure we've all been there. Okay, it's its turn, it's going to roll to swing. Okay, it hits, here's some damage. Okay, it's its turn, it's going to roll to swing again. Okay, it misses, your turn. Okay, it's its turn, you get what I'm going. It doesn't change. But what if your monsters decided to try different things or you added an extra different ability that they might be able to use to spice things up? So maybe instead of swinging in this round, they try for a grapple. Maybe instead of swinging, they try for a shove or a trip or something along those lines just to spice it up, just to keep your players on their toes and to make things a little different. Add that variation in any regard when it comes to your combat. We'll get into some other ways when it comes to environment and tactics a little bit later on, but this is just purely when it comes to the action economy and what you can do with it in those moments. Definitely try to spice things up, throw in some things your players might not expect. One tiny trick just to speed things up when it comes to damage on the DM side is take the average or take the average and just have something set in your own mind that like, on the first swing, it might be the average. On the second swing, you're going to have the average plus two. On the third swing, you're going to have the average minus two. Something like that. So it's not the same number every time. If your players care about that sort of thing, they'll always know what they're going to take and be able to prepare for that. Maybe you like that. Maybe you don't. Maybe your players do. Maybe they don't. But if you add a little variation to that, maybe you have it in mind that it's a, it's a 14, right, is the average. Sometimes you make it a 7. Sometimes you make it a 21. It's still going to average out the same, but the numbers are different, and you can have that little bit of spice. But that'll make it so you don't have to whip out dice and start rolling them all and doing the math and calculating things while you're trying to speed things up because remember a lot of the time especially in virtual tabletops when you might lose player engagement is when it's your turn as the dungeon master and you're trying to handle a bunch of stuff so the faster you can toss it back to players means the faster they're back and engaged in your game on the flip side for the players you can always ask players and this is very easy to do in person a little bit harder online but there are ways to do it is to ask them to roll their damage with their attacks because then it's already there they don't have to then click another button or pull out another dice it's already been rolled and they can do it some might tell you this isn't a big enough difference to care about and maybe they're right but i think it can sometimes speed it up just enough and at the end of an encounter if it was three four five six rounds that might be enough to have kept somebody more engaged and to have moved combat along at a faster rate circling back to something i mentioned earlier change up the environment make the environment something that they can utilize in combat or that impacts them in combat so having different levels of elevation is something you could do having for instance something i did recently they had gone into a network of caves and within that network the cave had different spots where like you know there's a hole in the roof and sunlight or moonlight was coming down providing these little areas these little beams of light that were touching the stone beneath well then they were attacked by shadows shadows that if they were in bright light would end up having disadvantage on attacks this meant that the players could utilize the environment they could move into these sections and if they put themselves in the middle then that would in turn give them a better chance against these shadows it allowed them to add a little bit more tactics to it and make the world during combat feel more alive 
alive and not just a battle map. You can get really creative with these sorts of things, so I do encourage it. Another thing you can do in the same vein is to add tasks during your combat. Have things where it's not just go swing at this person. This could be exceptionally helpful if you want more of a ranged combat and you don't want to end up like making your barbarians or your fighters not feel impactful if they tend to be more melee classes. So what you can do is have a task in your combat or set something up like if the fighter gets over to this ballista that's set up over there or something like that, then they can utilize that to compete alongside the rangers that are using bows or the spellcasters that have ranged spells. Another big suggestion I have, but it is one that comes with a caveat, is make it more immersive. Not every group is going to like this. There are some that they're not too much there for the role play, and when you get immersive, it doesn't exactly speed up your combat so this has to be a group that's okay with having some longer sessions but with more detail describing as the you know the enemy makes their attack roll and they hit and then they roll their damage and describing how it reached out with its shadow hand which formed into a physical claw and scratched down across their arm describing the player's attacks when they hit two powerful hits and you describe how the blade slashes across from the right and then swings back from the left carving an x into the torso of the warrior in front of them some players are going to love this detail and it gives you an outlet for some of your creativity and descriptions however it will slow things down as some players are just there to roll dice and do damage so it's going to depend on your group but if they like it it's a great thing to add to make combat more enjoyable you can also do what a lot of you know the big time dms do and allow the players to describe killing blows now you're gonna have variations where maybe you do it for every killing blows but if it's a big fight they're gonna have to give descriptions for you know 10 15 different creature kills or you can stick to the very last creature standing or the big bad evil guy or monster right just have them describe that kill that can make things a lot more fun for them and lastly this is a combination of some of the things mentioned earlier but be prepared make your games easier to run as a dm as well as with the players know your stat blocks have your things sorted everything situated that you can control come in with the best possible preparation that you can have with the time that you have and the resources you have and that will make combat flow way better not leave it up to a lot of questions and trying to figure things out which will break the immersion break the engagement and slow things down in a negative way so make sure you come in prepared and that will make your combat that much better not only for you as a dm or gm but also for your players i promise another tip that i think is very important and should probably just be put in the rules is making your crits better currently it's just up to chance and oftentimes you can deal less damage getting a crit so what you want to do is basically just guarantee the first die is max damage so let's say it's a long sword crit right and they have a plus two strength what are they going to get normally they roll 2d8 they add two it could be four damage quite literally it could be four damage what you can do to negate that and ensure that crits feel good and the player knows they're going to do more damage than they would have otherwise because that's the whole point in a crit is that you say okay instead of rolling 2d8 you get eight damage and then you roll a d8 so minimum you're gonna have nine on the die 11 damage or you could deal as much as 8, 8, 16, plus 2, 18 damage. That's a lot better than 4, and you're more likely to get it with this tactic. So go ahead, give them that extra damage. Your monsters are going to get it too. If you're loving this content and you want more TTRPG and Dungeons and Dragons content, please consider subscribing to the channel, giving this video a thumbs up, leaving a comment if you have a different tip down below. I would love to be able to share these things with more people, and of course, the thoughts that you have as well. And if you want to check me out at Patreon, it's patreon.com slash levelupdm. I'll have a link down below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And until next time, good luck in your adventures.